Bismillahirrahmanirrahim wa atiullahi rasul ulul amri minkum. And that always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeezu da'eef wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahat. And but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence, alhamdulillah that we took a path towards these oceans of realities that Allah has destined, not through our cleverness and not through any account of our own but Allah whom Allah guides is guided. And the highest guidance are to tariqahs and to the tariqahs, the essence of all tariqahs, the soul of all tariqahs is Naqshbandiyatul Aliya. And so alhamdulillah Allah guiding to that reality, to His Divinely love, the Divinely ishq, I'm not in heaven, I'm not on earth. I'm in the heart of Muhammadun Rasulullah I'm on the heart of my servant. For those who don't understand whom Allah's servant, it's much easier to be very clear. I'm in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Anyone in search of Allah the real reality of Allah imitated Allah is throughout the universe, قُلْ هُوْ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ that was a command from Allah to Prophet to his who, kalima who, baha who, right? Why? Because alif, lam, lam, he, from what we understand is the collective name of Allah that holds the names and attributes. It's not Allah astaghfirullah, it's what we of knowledges are directing towards a name but Allah has infinite names. That alif is always separate, lam, lam, he, what they say in Arabic, ma siwa Allah. All that's other than Allah is located in the lam, the lam and the he. Allah's reality to be known is a hidden treasure that's why it's disattached. So Lillah has an understanding, if you take one of those lamb away then you have Lahu. You take the other lamb away you have Hu. To know the Hu of Allah we don't know anything from Allah but since lam lam he is masiwa Allah means all that's other than Allah means it's creation. <coughs> Creator is outside of creation hence the kalima is teaching you more than the, than the words of people or the tafsirs of books. Allah put the haqqaiq in the letters. I want you to come, so the message was, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Tell all my creation there's only one, there's only one power, there's only one atom in this universe, only one and that atom has only one nucleus, means only one center of power. Everything then can be infinite in its numbers. But the one nucleus, one source of power, bring them to my ahad. Bring them to oneness. So everyone at that level is commanded by all the Prophets of Allah that don't say there's many nucleuses, many sources of power, there's but one power. That bring everybody to Allah's ahad. That there is nothing like onto it. So then that ocean of oneness, then are all the Prophets bring everything back to the center. My creation seems to be going and focusing in different directions, bring them on their circumference and direct them to the center of the circle, not the outside of the circle. So this ikhlas and sincerity to reach sincerity. Allah then activated all His Prophets 
alayhim salam, peace and blessings be upon you, move their souls. They come to my oneness. Means when they come into that ocean of oneness, that is the command, but they didn't reach to Allah. You took them from many to bring them to one. Just because they accepted didn't mean that they came into its reality, they didn't enter into that reality. They just accepted their Islam. They didn't reach Iman or Maqam al Ihsan. Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known. That treasure will be known not on heaven, not on earth, but in the heart of my believer. Qalbul Mu'min Baytullah. That fire of divine love, that qudra of Allah is located in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad is the source in that power, that reality, that that who from alif, lam, lam, he, that who is the guide of Allah The only guide, every other guide is a guide within that who. But the origin and the original, the one that contains all realities, the who-ness of Sayyidina Muhammad is the one Allah is talking to when He says, Qul hu, Qul is Allah's speech. Qaf wal Qur'an al-Majeed, Lisan al-Haqq is speaking to His Hidayat, His, ha- his Hadi, His guide whom is made from wow and love. His Qudra, His Qul is to this who that I created you, you are Hadi, you are Hadi, the, the guidance of Allah and I created you with this wow that you are created from my ocean of love. You exist from this ocean of muhabbat and love that humans don't understand. And the shaitan make them run to after other things thinking that's love. And that ishq and that love is what Allah is directing us, don't come to only the superficial knowing of Allah but come into my oceans of haqqaiq, come. Don't swim on the outside all your life thinking you, you've known something, take your path into its reality. So we never leave the vase. But Allah said, why are you just floating around the vase? Huh? Back to the lantern. Everyone has a candle at home. What Allah described in Surah an nur neither of the east or of the west, and that that light is in a lantern, that light, lantern in a niche. Means that this existence of ours inside this lantern of light and Allah is, is not something to understand for us. And that's, La ilaha illallah, nothing is like unto Allah so when Allah guide, He said, go now into this lantern, stop coming out here, stop roaming around recklessly and unguided. When Allah wants to guide His servant, He begins to send them from that into the flame. Direct yourself into the center of all power. That power is the power for all of Allah's created universes. Go to the ocean of power, go to the power maker. You don't need anything else, you don't need to go anywhere else. Direct your path to the flame. So what we had in Tahseen, the purified fire. When Allah was describing Surat Al-Tahseen and awliyaullah were giving this understanding, tilka ayat al kareem
means that that purified fire make your life to move towards that fire. Don't stop until you get to that fire. And that fire is the association of ashiqeen because they're lit, their own fire. Their lives are based on that fire, they're in a continuous state of burning, continuous state of testing, difficulties, sadness, everything. Because they're in continuous state of burning, they are the examples of that flame. And the guidance is to live a life entering into that flame. And when you begin to move towards that flame, everything other than that fire is burning and that's why the difficulties in life, everything. So people complaining and emailing about this complaint, that complaint, but that was the path. When they're talking about a fire it's not the uh, physio no physiology, it's, it's a philosophy class, it's actual real flame. When your, bother, your boss is bothering you that's the flame Allah's talking about. When your drive is too long that's the flame Allah's talking about. When your kids are annoying you, that's the flame Allah's talking about. When every difficulty in this life comes, that is the flame. And Imam Ali said that whatever your fate is, face it. Means burn more. Why if you see the flame are you looking for a way out? You're just prolonging. That flame will catch you in the grave and it burns much more intense in the grave. You have no way out. At that time that fire comes. Some describe it as hell and the difficulty and azab of the grave. But those whom took their azab in life, they took their testing in life, they took their difficulty, Allah's ni'mat and blessing, I burned you a little every day. You don't want that? I'll burn your Lord at one time because that's not coming into heaven. These things that you brought into that qab, they're not coming to my paradise. This character you have, these, these issues that you have, they can't come to my paradise. So that's why Mawlana Shaykh would describe that those whom follow awliya, they're under Allah's blessings and, and a gift and those whom distance themselves from awliyaullah They've distanced themselves from Allah's ni'mat and gift. Why? Because they're describing all these realities. Accompanying their teachings and their way of life is not easy because they understood the reality of the grave, they understood that Allah is a… Have you seen these people who work in these chemical plants? They play all day long in these toxic chemical plants. And then there's like a D, what do they call it, like a shower room? They have to enter in a safe zone, immediately everything locks and this chemical steam and water and everything is, is washing them, they have to put their hands up because they don't want the contaminants from that side to come out into the general population. Imagine if they have viruses and things that they're working on. Those can't come into this population, Allah would just say, I'm not letting those viruses you have, your character, all the devils around you and in you and on you into my paradise. You're going to go through this system to be cleaned. And the most to the flame is that reality. Every sadness and difficulty, every testing, people email that they just want to die. Say, you didn't get it yet. If Allah put you in our email and Allah has you watching these channels then you're from the people of the moth and this life of ours is like a flame. The outer trappings of life doesn't matter, it doesn't mean that you're all you're eating you don't have a flame. No, you may have many foods but Allah will test you in a different way that makes your life to be like burning. You may have a nice house, nice car. 
but you're separated from the one whom you love and that's your burning and that's your test. And they can give you all the money in the world and it won't make you feel better. Some people have all the money in the world and all the things they want and all the love they want and Allah sends them a cancer and a sickness and all the money in the world won't take that away, it won't even buy them more time. So it means everybody has a fire. Are we facing it in this world? Then you're very blessed. If you burn a little bit every day and you have sabr, why Allah describes patience, sabr jameel, huh? beatific patience. Because Allah makes you to be beatific when you're patient. He didn't say, azab jameel, sabr azab, sabr azab. He didn't say that, oh, the patient ones are horrific. But you're beautiful when you're patient. Why? Because Allah's dressing, He knows the testing. I put fire on you, I make difficulties in your life. If you have the characteristic of sabr and patience and you tolerate, and you tolerate because this is all the teaching are these beads and tasbeehs that you're connected, you connect your heart, you're at the feet and the threshold of Sayyidina Muhammad and say that, I have such a love for you, such a ishq for you, I'm confident in my love and this difficulty came and I take the sweet and the sour because it's from you. You are my king, nothing comes to me without your permission. If it came sweet, alhamdulillah I'm kissing your hands and feet and if it came sour, I'm begging you keep me under your feet. Don't let me to become shocked from it, angered from it and then run towards shaitan instead of towards Rahman. Keep me, that's why Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jailani Qaddasullah Siru said, all awliya under my feet, that's a Muhammadan expression. That's not a shaykh's expression, that's in the tajalli of Sayyidina Muhammad saying that my qadam on all their necks, they don't ask to be moved from it, why? Because they're under trial and tribulation. And what Allah says, they khawfun alayhim, they don't have fear nor sadness because they're held under that foot and they recognize this is from Allah through the Sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad everything, everything, not a, not a grain under a mustard seed is not under that command. But you don't know that if you don't have tafakkur and you don't practice your tafakkur, you don't practice your, 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 your connection. But when you do practice your connection you realize that everything Everything coming, you go into your prostration, you're asking, Ya Rabbi grant me sabr, grant me patience and asking Prophet keep me under your qadam and your qudra and your nazar and make this difficulty to pass for me. And when Allah sees the servant in a state of sabr, they're patient, they control the fire, they control the difficulty because this is the flame in our life, we have to move to that flame. So nobody can complain about a test that comes, a sickness that comes, a difficulty that comes. It's a part of the flame, you wanted it now or you want it in the grave, I love you, I give it to you now. Are you patient to take the burn? You have the training in which to keep that love and muhabbat. Don't worry about the people in the play in the show that Allah put in characters. This is only between you Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad because Sayyidina Muhammad is our intercessor, the only one whom can relieve a difficulty and pray for the difficulty to be lessened. When we have that yaqeen then this sabr that Allah dresses the servant Nabi Muhammad al-Mustafa comes and makes your character to be beautific. It gives you the Muhammadan name, that's why these two names are important. When Allah want to dress from sabr from Ismullah 
he's going to dress but it's a key to the name of Sayyidina Muhammad that dresses your soul and fragrances you with a Muhammadan dress because Allah is only interested in La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah So He wants to see your Muhammadun Rasulullah, your Muhammadan dress. He wants to see what dress you got from your Prophet. Are you dressed in this sabr? Are you dressed in Nabi Mustafa Are you be- becoming the beatific and fragrance and the chosen one? Do you have that tajalli upon yourself? Means then that's the reality of these flames that they're reciting, that enter into the flame. Keep the association of testing, that when we know we're sitting in that association you're tested from every single direction. There's nowhere that is not tested. If the devil ran into paradise, the devil is everywhere because Allah wants the servant to be tested. If they're patient through their testing with their good character and their realities then Nabi Muhammad and Mustafa to dress them and bless them. And this is the way to achieve these fragrances and these realities. As a result of achieving those then they taught in their kalams that not only are any more a part of their association but because you went so deep into the burning of that association that fire actually resides within your heart. You're now considered to be lit, right? Because that moth became a sun, right? It came as something so insignificant because it was just playing around the fire. When it decided to actually be burned in the fire, Allah threw the fire within its reality. So if a fire comes from Allah's Divine and Eternal Presence, not any fire, that is Allah's Divinely fire, I'm going to throw my fire into your heart, you're lit, you're eternal. You're lit and eternal like I lit the sun and I lit all the stars because they have no mass and they're fire, burning fire, eternal, they have no time. Why? Because Qalbul Mu'min Baytullah, I made my home within your heart. My Divinely love resides within your heart. So much so you're like a Qibla, people look at you they'll have faith. You're Kaaba because they keep circumambulating around you to find Allah and to be close to Sayyidina Muhammad That's why they teach what they teach these awliya, that's their expressions and their teachings. Always a reminder for myself that this fire of love, if you don't feel it, you're not in the right location. If you're not feeling something burning you, then you're maybe running from it and trying to avoid the flame. Our life is about facing our fate. Anybody who feels the burn, feels the sadness, feels that my difficulties have increased when I met you, congratulations, you did it right. If I, no, nothing happened, you're not doing it right because you don't feel the heat, you don't feel this flame, you didn't find hardship in everything that you're doing, you didn't do it right. So seek the flame. Seek the reality. Those whom feel it know that Allah's ishq is now glowing within your heart. You have to feel it, you have to understand it that all these difficulties, all this it it comes with a price that Allah is saying, I'm not on heaven, I'm not on earth. If I'm going to make your heart my home there's a price to it. I burn away everything other than me that only will exist is what? Our father of the tariqah taught us what? What exists if everything burns? La ilaha illallah and Muhammadun Rasulullah If that's all that he left, that was the inheritance of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as I gave everything, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, I brought all my dunya 
for you because this is dunya you wanted it for your battles and whatever you wanted I brought everything for you. So what you left for your family, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah teaching us that is the perfection of faith. There is nothing in this life, nothing in this life but La ilaha illallah and the only thing that gives you any importance is the love and ishq of Muhammadun Rasulullah dressing and blessing the soul. We pray that Allah inspire us that whatever our faith is in life move towards it. If you think that you're going to avoid it, He created the great equalizer which is called the grave. That's for all the running people, it seems to catch them wherever they go. The earth just opens up and they fall. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from the immensity of these lights and this love. This is the month of that flame, manzar al-Qur'an, the month of Surat al-Yaseen. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon, wa salaamu ala al-mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammadin Mustafa, wa ala siri Surat al-Fatiha.